Oh, that's not gonna work. Look at that humidity. That's pathetic. 30%. That one says 26. I have the two of these out here so I can, like, kind of get an average of things. But that, that's too dry. Way too dry. At one point, it was at 50%, but I've had the doors open, been doing some things, moved the palm trees out. Not, like, permanently for just, for, like, probably a week or two. Because the temperatures are, not all the, don't, if you watched last week's vlog, then you know I moved some palm trees in that can take the cold, but it was too cold for them. It was only for a few days. So they're back out. I have space to move around now, and I'm ready to get back to work. I literally just released Saturday's video, so while everybody's watching that video, I've already begun vlogging for this video that you're watching right now. And that's why this cough, I didn't go back. It's the same coffee I've had, and I reuse those cups a lot, too. I make them last for a long time. Anyways, kind of going with the flow here. I don't have a huge objective other than to finish absolutely everything that I need to do out here. Oh, right, that's not happening. But I do want to go ahead and get the plants placed, get my plastic up, I have a new pole to put up there. Maybe go ahead and get those plants arranged on the shelves on the other side of things over here because that needs to be done. I need to tidy up my orchids, what's left of them that the squirrels managed to not destroy this year. And so, yeah, I need to handle things before I can put the plastic up. The plastic needs to go up to help hold in that humidity. That's why things started the way they did, like what, a minute and a half ago? Just now got to the point. I'm having a lot of trouble keeping things hydrated with this extremely dry air, and now the temperatures are warmer. I keep things like in the upper 70s to mid 80s in here, and that, that's not gonna work. I just watered you. You were just watered. Stop being so needy. Okay, sorry, I didn't have to take that out in the plant. That's just what plants do. So yeah, that's, What's going on this week? I'm gonna try and get some stuff done. I guess the more I talk about getting stuff done, the less I'm gonna get done. I can't remember, I bought a pole to go up here so I could expand out my hanging baskets, but I don't, I don't remember where I put it. How did I lose an eight foot pole? I don't know. Actually, I bet it's still in the car. That's probably where it is. Yes, there we go, found it. That's very dark. I picked this up last week when I was at the hardware store. Or, I mean, it was like, you know, a few hours ago for me, but last week for y'all. It's a closet rod. I had a few of those. I'm at it. Eight feet long. Barita para amarillo. So, this is going to go up there. Like this. It's just a bigger pole. Yeah, right? Right there. That's like a, I don't know, five foot dowel, maybe, that's up there. Actually, I think that might be an old broom handle. I'm not really sure. It did the trick and whatnot, but I can only hang a few things from it, so put up this bigger one. The original plan was to put one over towards the front over here, like actually come around, see what I'm talking about. I was going to put it up here, which I talked about in the last vlog. I realized because of the fan, that's not going to work out at all. Because if the plants are hanging up like right here, that air is just gonna blow on them constantly. It'll dry them out way too fast. So it'll be better for them to be back there. I also need to rotate this Eureka Balm, the angle of this one trunk that's down here, right there. Drive me crazy, and it's getting in the way of me being able to lower my orchids down to water them, so I need to do... There's it's lots of need-to-dos. That's all that's happening. Lots of need to do. Pull this one out and just put that. I'm just going to wiggle this new one into place. I wonder if I should change that string out. I have some like actual heavy duty paracord that would be able to hold more weight. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna have this loaded up with baskets right away, but if I were to, might want something more sturdy there. Hmm, yeah, it's fine for now. And my hooks hung back up. This was one thing with these, I was like, oh no, what if they don't fit around this pole? But they do, I dropped a couple down here. Not tall enough to do this. I need a tall person. The ladder does not fit over here. People, where you at? Someone, come help me. I have plants I need to hang up. Jenna Marbles, you done growing yet? Hello, it's me, your tall friend, Jenna. Thank goodness for step ladders. Okay, well that's an improvement, but still not quite where it needs to be. I need to get some more S hooks to lower them down. They need to be, see that light right there? Right there, it's behind the really upset, pissed off neon pothos. They need to be just below that, because being right there where that pothos is, that's not really doing it any good. It needs to be just below that. So yeah, more S hooks. But the pole's up. I was able to get several more plants up there. I still have two. I had to look down. I have two hanging baskets. I still need to go up there. One of those being the 
Yesenia, Yesenia, which I picked up last week, and then I have a uh, Cebu Blue, uh, another Cebu Blue, but I think I may not put that one up there. That's something I gotta think about, but either way, I need to get more S-hooks. Not a big deal. I could make them with, like, wire hangers, but I don't have any wire hangers. I've done that before, and it was pretty easy, and even, like, just some heavy gauge wire, which I have some of. But I'd rather not use it for this. I need it for something else. And I also, in the meantime, gave my orchids a good soak. This Vanda is just so lovely. You can't see it though, hold on. You know, I always have to get the things going with the lights. There we, well, kind of, it's a slight improvement. Such a pretty Vanda, beautiful flowers. I love the tessellation, that's the veining in there. Makes me so happy. It doesn't have a name on it, would you? behave that light wants to go other places it did have some bud blast on it but that's not really shocking considering that it was outside and then it got cold and then it got moved inside and it was warm lots of changes and that can be a big factor with the uh, bud blasting and losing flower buds when there's a lot of temperature shifts and whatnot but yeah still very happy with these blooms and they've been on this plant for a very long time too this one started blooming i don't know maybe a month ago and it's still going and looking great. This, I was going to save this until the end of the video. I'll pick up with the rest of the things that are budding and blooming at the end of the video. I got to get back to work. And it's just, it's too, the lights, it's too much. That's one of three I have shining in my face right now. Can't help it. I just get so distracted by pretty things. What am I to do? I started putting together a planter. And it's not intended to look pretty right now, so don't be judgy. I have a space up here that you can see when I'm standing at that desk right here on this table where I like to have kind of a big shallow pot with something that's just kind of nice to look at. And um, I don't know if I would say that this necessarily fits the bill for it and nice to look at, but the intention is that hopefully it will. It just has a small lutea in it that has a lot of dieback on it, but I'm not surprised by that because, you know, the cold and everything. And then this is an impatient, which I don't normally try and overwinter. I'm giving it a cutback because I think that that's going to be necessary to get it to flush out and look somewhat decent. This is called the Bounce Bright Coral. It's an inner specific. It's basically, from what I can tell, what I've gathered from it. Pardon the picture, by the way. It's kind of dark over here. Basically like a knockoff sun impatient. And uh, these bloomed so beautifully all summer long so i was just like you know what i had a couple extras that were still in their nursery pots and i thought well let's go ahead and give it a shot and see how they do i would be surprised if they do much of anything because sun impatience usually like a good amount of light and conditions that are much more similar to being outdoors but I'm like well, we'll see what happens although you know what this alakaja that's in here it started to put itself into a dormancy. I'm thinking maybe I should probably put something else in the center here that's not like trying to, it's just a big shock to them to be going into a dormancy and then to wake them up when they're in the middle of that. Like if they're going into a dormancy, it's good to go ahead and let them have that rest for several weeks and then bring them back out of it. But, huh, okay, well, I had good intentions here. I'm gonna think about this one for a minute. You know, uh, I have these Brazilian fireworks down here. That's Porphyrocoma polyania, I believe. These are fantastic plants. Move that to lands out of the way, get a better look at them. But they bloom fairly profusely for throughout the year. I mean, right now they're kind of resting, as you can see. Not the fastest grower. I've had this one right here for several years and it hasn't done a ton. But I also haven't done much with it because it's just kind of been one of those plants that's just like down. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm good. Like, I'm going to do my thing. So this would be, I'm not going to pull it out of here because I've had it in this pot for such a long time. Even when I repotted these areca palms in the spring, I still kept it in here, kept it in the exact same spot. It is thirsty. Everything's thirsty right now. That's why I need to get this plastic thing handled. So why not deviate into doing an impromptu planter, right? I think that this would be beautiful in one of those Tadavera pots. What I'm thinking is this might be a good plant to do a propagation on this winter time. And that would be a good plant to put in that planter. So I'm gonna, just gonna think on that and then get back to doing the things I'm actually supposed to be doing. And the reason that I'm confident this alocasia here is going into a rest and not just dying is Partially, I mean, mainly because all the growth on it is still very, very firm. 
it just kind of started to pale out and die back over a period of a few weeks with the weather changing and everything it's still very firm there's no mush no weird smells the roots are still i mean looking okay so like i said i think i should just let this guy rest and then as a placeholder <laughs> for when i get something to put in there i'm just going to drop that pot in there fill in around it so that when i have something to put in the center here i can just pull that out and plop it in without having to tear up any roots that are probably going to be very delicate and freshly developed from these impatience. Man, this quality is just terrible. I need to bring my lights over here. I'm so sorry. As I, I didn't explain what's happening. I got that pull up and now I'm just going through tech, doing some odd and end things because I want to get them done before the plastic's up so that if I spill a lot of things, I can sweep it out nice and easily. So that's why I did that up there with the planter, which look at how that just came out beautiful didn't it oh so pretty but yeah that wasn't that's we'll get to watch it grow together that'll be fun this anthyrum really need to get some support on this one this poor thing it wants to climb it's like okay i'm ready for that arboreal life give me a trellis so i need to get on that i'll put that on my list with my s hooks that i need to go get but it also needs a repotting and guess what you know what i'm out of right now time i don't have time so i'm just top dressing it with a little bit of fresh soil, uh, pretty loose aeroid mix here. I added a little bit of starter fertilizer. I don't remember which brand, as well as some Osmocote. And then I'm just gonna do this with my teeny tiny little rake. <laughs> just gently work that in, just like that. And then this goes back over here, where it always does, but it really, really needs a support because it's like getting lanky and scraggly. It wants to grip onto something. And I'm cheating because like I said, I don't have time right now to do a repot. So a little bit of fresh soil, some fertilizer, and like you just, you chill, you just chill here for like, I don't know. I think I'll be able to get to that in January. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's okay the way it is. Like, this isn't a terrible situation for it. It's got something to lean against and whatnot. Okay, I have kind of come to a standstill, and I'm like, I don't really know what to do here. Everything is just so big. <laughs> Everything's grown so much. I mean, this croton, I have that raised up. I did, I put the croton up on top of a couple of crates because I wanted to make sure that it was closer to the lights. But, like, still, you see this, like, this bird of paradise? totally shading that cordelin that fruta casa that's the singapore twist down there these orange bird of paradise aren't going to get anywhere near enough light right there so i still have to shuffle i'm thinking i'm probably going to have to put some bigger plants down on that side of the garage which i don't normally do that's usually just where the smaller plants go but like that's not going to work because no light's getting through because the I love this croton. It's, I think, one of my favorite plants. It's just a great big bush of beautiful color. But it's, you know, comes with some problems. The bigger the plants get, then you, you have to space them apart further. And it's, like, never recommended to throw your plants this close together. This is bad. You shouldn't do this. Plants need airflow. They need air moving around them. <laughs> Why did I just say airflow and then say, you know what that means? And then there can be uh, problems with pests and whatnot. Things just transfer a lot more quickly from one plant to another when they're jam-packed together. But I've been doing this in here for over a decade. That hasn't been a major issue. I just have to stay on top of things and watch them closely. Do some rotations, shuffle things around just because I put something in one spot. Does not mean at all that that's where that needs to stay. Things can be moved. So at least I have everything like in the vicinity of where it needs to be. Do, does anybody care about this? It's just because once I have this plastic up, then it's not like I can't move a plant anymore. That's not the case. It's just, I try and think about the details of, okay, well, am I gonna be able to water that plant? Like, look, that croton, you can't even see it back there because the spread on this Monstera is probably a good, I don't know, it's big, <laughs> really big. And I need to pull it back up onto that support that's going to be a project that happens this winter getting it repotted and staked up and everything but i need to like look at how tall that croton is and yes it's on top of a couple of crates but at least i know the top of it is getting good light so that's good because i've talked before about how sometimes with the crotons i bring them in and they just throw a fit and drop their foliage but i did i brought them in before it got super super cold out this year i mean kind of better than i have in other years and then 
this one back here, it's been okay so far. I don't want to jinx it. But so far, it's been doing okay. Been kind of thirsty because that mix that it's in in its pot drains a little bit too quickly. So I have to water it frequently. But that's the whole point of all of this is to get that plastic up so that the humidity can stay up so that I don't have to water constantly. You can see on here, the lowest humidity point was 25%. I mean, that's pathetic, and that's partially because outdoors this time of year, like pretty much now through April, the humidity is pretty low. Winter and early spring air here is usually kind of dry, but I guess really, maybe I should say mid-March. So anytime that garage door opens, it lets in the cold and dry air, which is another reason I like having this whole area wrapped in the plastic. It's a smaller area to heat, and then those garage doors can go up and down, no big deal, without really affecting the plants very much at all. If they're up for a really long time and it's like 10 degrees outside, that's not good. But it still, I have that extra assurance that, hey, everything's gonna be okay because at least there's a barrier. And I use multiple layers of plastic, so it's like the cold hit, what, I'll talk about that when I do that. And in this whole process, I really, I, I, have, I have too many hibiscus. I moved every single one of them in just to be safe. And yes, like I said, they are bone dry because it was super cold this past week and I don't have my plastic up. So I would rather them be a little bit too dry than to rot out from being watered when it's like 40 degrees because the, the, the you know, the plastic's not up. We talked about that. But like, I don't need all of these. There's only a few that I'm attached to. There's the, uh, the name is Sex on the Beach. I didn't name it. Don't come for me for that one. And then uh, Chatty Cathy, the old one with the pink center. My seminal pink, and then the one that doesn't have a name, but I showed it a lot over the summer. And that's the one I just showed you before. I don't need to keep all these other ones that I'm not even attached to. Oh, hi, hi, hi. I was looking for you, because I knew I hadn't cleaned this one out yet. Like to try, I'm trying to get all of the debris out of the pots before the plastic's up, because it's just really hard to get in there and sweep, you know, when there's a whole entire wall there to get through. And almost forgot about this heliconia too. I'm trying to get all that stuff picked out of there. This is my Hirsuta, which I think is probably my favorite of the Heliconias. Not necessarily because of its flowers, but these are tough, sturdy Heliconias. A lot of the Ceteracorums are a lot more tricky to overwinter. They like a lot of heat. And the Hirsuta is a heat-loving Heliconia, but this growth right here, that's just since I brought it inside a couple weeks ago. And I just kind of took this one and stuck it in a corner until I was ready to get to it because I was like, even if this one dies back, I can move it back into the light and the heat, give it a good watering, it'll bounce back for me. So it was one of those plants where I was like, you're, you're a tough one. You're just gonna chill for a minute somewhere else for me. But that's, if anybody's into the Heliconias, I really like this. It's Heliconia hirsuta. I think this variety is called Costa Flores, but I've never seen anything that talks about what the difference is. And you can see there's a little bit of cold damage. They don't like cold. Most heliconias really do not do well with any cold, but it's still like doing its thing. It's like, I don't care. Yeah, go ahead and give me some frost. I'm still gonna keep growing. I like that. That's my kind of plant, tough. Okay, and then also gonna drop this reflex over here because again, some cold damage. You know, it can take a few weeks for cold damage to show. So. When we had cooler temperatures, I was like, oh, it's fine. It didn't seem to be bothered at all. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, you get those tips on, but it's okay. As long as the center is okay, it's not discolored or anything, then the plant's okay. It'll keep going out with that monopodial growth. It, uh, this one never saw any frost. So it's a little bit strange, but there were a few dips into the upper 30s. And sometimes that's all it takes, especially if there's a lot of wind. But this whole area over here, this whole side over here is very warm. This is like the warmest side of things. So that's where I want things that need some time to recover. Like this, needs some recovery time. It's gonna want more heat. The Heliconia, it's gonna do a lot better over here with the heat, the uh, Philodendrons, the Monstera. The Monstera will be fine, like regardless, as long as it doesn't get overwatered, it's not too cold, but just, you get what I'm saying. This is where I kind of keep the things that are warm lovers. And this is a, uh, piece that broke off from a larger plant. It's a Cordelin fruticosa tiki. I think that's its name. It's a dwarf one. Stays really small, but I just stuck it in some soil there because like, I don't like things are, there's enough going on. Don't need to be propagating things right now, maybe in a week or two. So my filming table's full. So when I film videos, I'll just have to move all that stuff. That's not that big of a deal. Sort of thinking out loud here, going through the process together with y'all, making sure that everything is kind of 
where it needs to be. Like I said, like this, that's not a dire emergency. That didn't have to be done right now. But by moving just a few of those plants, I made room for other things that would make more sense to have over where it's a little bit more cool. Holy freaking drama queen. I shouldn't be playing with this right now. I just watered this zebra plant yesterday. And that's how you know it's time to repot something. That's that's a bit much. So I'm gonna let that soak for quite a while. Whatever perks up will perk up and then that that is on the top of the list for a repotting because that that's too much. If you're gonna need to be watered twice a day, I don't have time for you. That's high maintenance, uh-uh. <laughs> Poor thing, I'm so sorry. Did just get watered yesterday though. With the low humidity, things should dry out so quickly. It'll be okay. <laughs> That was fun. Let me just show you everything that's just dying. Not really. Actually, I haven't lost anything yet, but I think I'm to the point where it's time to go to the hardware store. I need to get some S-hooks. Well, I need to get two types. I need to get the S-hooks to hang the baskets up and teeny tiny little S-hooks so that I can attach my plastic to the chain that's up there. Oh, fun story. And I need to cut my fingernails because for some reason they're growing like insanity, like twice a week. Hey guys, how you doing? I don't, why can't I stop myself from looking at the plants when I'm here? I was just here. I mean, y'all, did you see last week's vlog? I've been here a lot. I know what they have, but then I see all the pretty little things on the shelves and I get ideas and <laughs> it's dumb. Just can't stop myself. Not getting anything though. There's nothing to get. I'm trying to make room for things. Although, I mean, I have plenty of space for all of the small plants. That's not an issue. It's just, I got a few big ones that are making things a little bit more difficult. Oh, this, you got some fancy braids. Nose is really busy today, so not going to be vlogging much more than this right here. Okay, I'm home. Hooks are up and I'm hanging up the last plant, the Jacinia pothos. That looks cool. I don't know. I realize that it's not like some kind of big reveal or anything. I gave everybody a watering because, oh my goodness, again, thirsty. They got so thirsty. When, Like I said, when it's so cold outside like it has been and that plastic's not up, I just kind of let them dry out a little bit more than I normally would because then they don't, I don't have to, what is it? Rot. I don't have to worry about them rotting. But it was only for a few days. I've been watering as I go and now it's, it's time to hang some plastic. <sighs> So here's the thing. Last year, when I was getting things tidied up, I had a helper who uh, went ahead, rolled this up for me. Very helpful, love it. People, you're often saying you should get help with these things. I agree, but then sometimes it just, everything goes wrong when that happens too. Not like I'm a control freak or anything, but there are just like little things where it's like, I know how something should be done. And then when I trust someone else to also do it, they tend to just totally screw it up. Basically, this is just like a giant wad of Gorilla Tape down here. It's useless. I tried pulling it apart. It's just tearing to pieces. So I could keep tearing it, but then I'm just gonna have a wall full of holes. Now, luckily my like actual nice greenhouse plastic isn't bundled up with this. The thing that's not so lucky about that is I don't, I don't know where it is. I thought it was all rolled up together. It's not. So this is just like drop cloth plastic. I'm about to go to Lowe's and get some more. So I'm determined to get this done tonight. The greenhouse film though, I don't know where it is. It's very expensive. It's like the kind you actually put on a greenhouse. I mean, for plastic, it's expensive. And that goes on this exterior wall. I mean, when I do it, we'll talk about it. I can't, we're going back to Lowe's. Oh. Here we go again. Good thing Lowe's is open till 10 otherwise. Well, I'd just do it another time. Uh, it's that time of year. The Amazonicas are starting to flood back into the stores. I went to a different Lowe's just kind of for a change of scenery. And this one's a little bit closer. I was just thinking, you know, hey, plant channel, I should show, look at plants. There we go. Now, plastic. Okay, the music in here is extremely loud and extremely copywritten, so I'm gonna zoom through here. Two milliliters, millimeter, is the thickest they have other than this down here, which is three and a half. And 10 feet's not big enough, it needs to be 12 feet. So, uh, I don't know what to do. This might not be happening in this video, which sucks when things don't work out. I just, I have them both in here so I can like think about it. Let me go find a quiet spot. 
update, there is no spot that's more quiet. And throat seal liquid. What? Okay, so I've got my plastic, but something happened in my brain. I was thinking when I was at the hardware store, I saw a riveting gun. And uh, not like a gun that was like a gun to put rivets into. It's a, it's a tool thing. I don't know what for, but it reminded me of a grommet gun, a grommet press, a little machine that pushes two r metal rings together essentially. And so you can make like tarps and curtains and do things with belts and shoes. And it's a nifty kind of tool and they look like they'd be fun to use. Don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. The way I have this set up now, see this chain that runs along the ceiling here? And then that black streak left over from the Gorilla Tape last year? When I first started doing this in my garage several years ago, I just used the materials I had, which was this really thin chain here. Don't know why, don't know what that's from and why I had it, but I did. And then, uh, you know, I had a bunch of S-hooks. So I was like, okay, let me go ahead, take this plastic that I have. I had tons of plastic at the time because I used to keep a lot of my palm trees outside all winter and I would wrap them up. The little greenhouses around them. I don't do that anymore. It's just too much work. I was hoping to have a better visual aid for this. But what I then did is I just made a little cut in the plastic, just a tiny little cut. And then I put duct tape on each side and then made a hole through that. That way I could put an S hook in there. I could slide it right into that spot and the plastic wouldn't continue to tear. Make sense? Essentially like a cheapo grommet situation. The problem with doing it this way is one, it's a pain in the butt keeping up with those S hooks every single year. They tend to just go missing and it's sort of a pain hanging it up. It's not that bad. But if I used grommets, if that's what I did, then I could go through here and put tiny little hooks up in the ceiling, like every, I don't know, six feet, just little hooks. And then when it's time to put the plastic up, I'd have that grommet so I could just take it and set it right in there. I'd leave some plastic in the center of the, plastic in the, what am I trying to say? Typically when you're using grommets, you punch a hole and then you put your grommet in. So what I would probably do is just not punch a hole and just make a little slit. So that way, cause the main thing is I wouldn't want a lot of air escaping through. I'd be able to get the plastic higher up to the ceiling without having to tape it. Cause the whole point of doing it this way was I didn't want to drill holes all over my ceiling. Then that happened with the Gorilla Tape. So, oops, won't make that mistake again. And won't need to if I do the, essentially what I'm getting at here is I'm gonna, <laughs> I know just a few minutes ago, I was like, I have to get this done. But now I'm like, okay, but I could really drastically improve on this, I think. Like, I could make some big changes to how I'm doing this that would make it both easier to set up and take down every year, and it would be more airtight up there and be a little bit more work. I think that's worth it, and it's supposed to be fairly warm over the next couple of weeks, like, outdoors, so I don't have to worry about temperatures in here too much. It's just a humidity issue. And even still, I mean, the humidity is at like 40 something percent right now. So it's not terrible. As long as the plants stay watered, the humidity is not too bad. It's when the plants dry out. If it gets super cold outside and I don't water in here as much, that the air just gets really, really dry. So uh, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts? There are tons of ways that the plastic could be hung. I've thought about using tension wire. Once I even thought about putting a zipper all the way through so I could zip the whole thing up to the ceiling. And then I was like, no, nah, that just seems like too much. I would need too much dexterity while being up that high. Seemed dangerous. I didn't want to do that. And, um, but I think that this would be easy and fairly cheap. The little grommet tool, like the little, there's like a punch you use to put them with. Those aren't super cheap. There are cheap ones, but they have really bad reviews. And, and you can't just use a hammer. I have tried that before though, and I'm not good at it. So I would rather use a tool. It's just, I'm just brainstorming here and telling you that I don't, think I'm going to put the plastic up. I, d I don't think so. Maybe I'll go ahead and throw just a thin layer up real quick. Just help hold some of that moisture in. But otherwise, I'm thinking the grommet thing might be the way to go as far as like a long term, this would make more sense. No more tape monster in the center of this. That's That was real bad. It's destroyed this entire thing. The, I'm not going to throw the plastic away. I'm going to try and cut all that out and I can still use this as like drop cloth material and stuff like that if I want to paint or impromptu cover some plants up something like that though I usually prefer to use frost cloth for that but all right that's it I was just thinking about that I guess now 
Time to get those shelves done. Actually, I don't guess. I have a plant order coming in, and they they need to go on the shelves. So I'm going to go do that. So the first thing I'm doing over here is I'm putting in more lights and watching my step to make sure I don't fall off the step ladder. These are just the linkable LEDs. I think they're at 55 or 6,000 K. I can't remember. So it's still not where they need to be. 65 to 67 is much better. But I had just one here and then one over here on the shelf last year. And the plants did well. But there, I did, blah, <laughs> sorry. I did start to notice there is some atoliation happening on this Echeveria here. So I was like, okay, well, apparently one's not going to be enough. They don't use a ton of power. That one needs to be raised up a little bit. That looks a little bit wonky, but uh, very, very bright though. Like, what a big difference having two on that one shelf makes. And so I'm gonna put another one over here. Clearly things like, like that Alakaja should not be there. That doesn't even fit. The bromeliads need to go somewhere else. I'm not really certain why I even brought, I just brought everything in. They're done, they've bloomed out. They will put up pups, little offshoots from the sides that I could keep, I suppose, but with everything else going on out here, I don't really know if that's necessary. But, I mean, they're not hurting anything, so they can stay for now, and I'll place them more appropriately. So, yes, I'm going to go ahead and put another light over here, and then uh, these lights that go on this shelf are totally different. They're not the same LEDs as above. They're just regular shop lights with a uh, with where I actually like bought separate bulbs to put in them that were daylight. I think they're 6,500K, I believe, LEDs that go in those. You can see it's a much more kind of cool tone. This one needs a bulb replace. You know, those LEDs, they last what? What'd they say, 10, 20 years? Or eight months? Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. Oh, the Amazel Basil. I never updated with that last week. This thing, like, within a few hours, perked right back up. Growth is a little bit weird. You can see on the pep. No, we're gonna do the plant things when I'm done, sorry. I get so excited when I see the things with the plants and I want to talk about them. I have to figure out how to get these plugged in, basically, because these aren't linkable. So I'm going to do that, and then, you know, we'll talk our way through it. Okay, it is much, much, much more bright over here, but I can't finish because look at this. Something's missing. There's, no, there's nowhere to put the bulbs in. See that end right there? That's normal. This end up here, nope, not so much. And I like pulled it and they're not inside there. <laughs> what? Why? Total, total, total waste of money. A little bit ticked off about that, but hey, at least I got things to a point where they're like in the vicinity of where they need to be. I mean, not totally, right? Like over here I have the Persian shield. This is the one that I cut back and said I'd save and See how it does in the winter? This really shouldn't be up here with the cactus and succulents. I mean, the rabbit's foot fern probably shouldn't be either, but I have noticed they're very dry. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't because this isn't finished, and I'm not going to be able to finish it because i got to get this video out, and I don't have time to keep going to the store and getting supplies. And, uh, you know, I'm actually kind of okay with this happening. From a consumer standpoint, I'm very much annoyed by that. That really kind of makes me angry. But the thing is, these other lights, the LEDs, the ones I started this whole area off with, those all link together. Whereas these on the bottom that I was just using the other LED bulbs in, they do not. And they're also apparently very poorly made because it turns out that that bulb up there, that bulb isn't out. It just isn't getting the right power. Maybe it needs a new starter, something, I don't know, but that shouldn't happen. They've only been used for like six months. So that shouldn't be going on. So instead of continuing to just fudge around with this and try and make it work i think next week and we'll just i'll go back to sam's and get four more of these up here because then i can link them all together have one thing plugged in because that's the other thing it's a safety thing too the extension cord out here that's not really safe it's okay to have an adapter like that's one thing but to have an adapter that also has an extension cord on it that has more things plugged into it that's getting kind of risky. I don't want to burn the place down or get electrocuted. That's another thing. I want to build like reservoirs to put in here. I might use just like the little mud tub things. You know, you put your boots in, something like that. But I need to have something up top to prevent water from running through here because I thought that these were wet rated. Turns out they're not the ones that I just tried to put up there. So 
whereas these up here are wet rated. This means they should have water pouring on them. But it's just kind of a peace of mind thing. You know what I mean? The progress has been made, which is great. I'm happy about that. There's still a sense of area back here. It's a little bit too tall for the shelf up here with the succulents. But I figured that's okay. I just won't water as much. Problem solved. I hand, hand water everything over here as it is, so that's not a big deal. This is normally like the easiest part of everything out here. The shelves. Like I throw them up, throw the lights on them, plug them in, done. And I have extra space because I'd like to do some propagation things this year and uh, get them, you know, have the things that don't really need to be watered often up top because, again, that water situation. So those will be hand watered. I can pull them down when they do need to be watered. Same thing over here. And then the top shelves are plants that I'm basically just kind of leaving alone. I'll have my dormant plumerias up there up top. And then my Thanksgiving holiday cactus. Look at it. It's budding out. It's ready to put on a show what I like to see. So still arranging to be done, but definite progress. I mean, and all this, this took like, I don't know, 10 minutes. It's not a big deal. Not at all. But back to like talking about the plants. We've got another orchid bloom over here. This is the first time bloom for me. This is, well, it was sold to me as a Vanda Cerulea semi-alba. Maybe it is. It does look kind of like a lot of the pictures I've seen it, but usually there's more tessellation inside the flowers on those and I don't see any tessellation at all but the semi-albas don't always put it out as much you can see usually Vanda cerulea is a light purple flower and the tessellation means it's like veining you can see all the veins in the flowers like on the pink one I showed before this one remember this one from earlier in the video you can see all that veining in there that's the tessellation so the uh, cerulea light purple semi-alba white and that's what I'm getting with that one white. I don't normally keep my Vandas over there. I just had to get it out of the way. Add some other things that were in its place. It's, you know, a shuffle. That's been what's going on this whole video, right? I have another first time bloomer here. The foliage is a little rough, but this is a Rhynchoroides Bangkok Sunset crossed with Renanthera storii. Should have really pretty flowers. I know I don't talk much about the orchids anymore, but when they go into bloom, may as well talk about it, right? They're pretty. And then there's more spikes up there. There's a whole bunch that are spiking right now, especially my Oncidium. Lots of spikes starting to show up on the Oncidiums. On that Aphelandra, see, I told you, it's fine. I'll go ahead and repot that in a little bit. It'll be okay. Oh, and I did another thing. I got excited, I couldn't help it, but do you see the problem here? I don't have a zipper door, so, which actually worked out okay. I can grab those zipper doors for fairly cheap at like Home Depot, and you just take a like exacto knife or a box cutter, cut a straight line, tapes up, you'll see. But this end over here is still open because the roll wasn't long enough to cover it, which is fine because I usually use multiple layers of the plastic. So that's, you know, <laughs> another job somewhat done. Oh, and the disso cactus. Look at those nice big buds. This particular cactus, when it blooms, they smell so good. It's amazing what a difference having a little bit of plastic up makes. This is, that is three and a half millimeters. Isn't that what that was? cheap terrible like that's normally i wouldn't even bother with it but i wanted to get something up because i it's not just about holding in the humidity i need to hold in some heat it costs money to use space heaters right so that did make a very big difference even though it's not wrapped all the way around still i mean 79 degrees and 55 percent humidity that's pretty darn good and once i had that plastic up it, the main thing with it is having it up close to the ceiling, right? Because the heat rises. So having that sealed off makes a big difference. And then having a body of water helps hold in some of that heat and re-release it very, very slowly. It's a whole entire like working system, somewhat working. It'll, it'll be fully working once I get the rest of the plastic put up. As of now, there's only one heater running. There were three running this morning and I got that plastic up and it went up, the temperature went up. It also warmed up outside. So that's part of it. Save some electricity. And it's just, space heaters make me nervous. I keep them on top of the cement. I don't let anything get near them. Uh, but still, you know, they can burn up, start fires, and then it's dangerous. So I don't really want to have three of them going if I don't have to. I usually only have to run all three of them when it's really, really dreadfully cold outside. And by dreadfully cold, I mean like below 20 Fahrenheit, something like that. And I feel my voice starting to go. So I'm going to wrap it up. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. Another fun-filled vlog of just 
you know, the thing's happening. I'm very happy with what I was able to get done, that's for sure. I mean, I got a lot done. I'm happy to see that plants are already responding to being inside. And that doesn't look very impressive. But remember, it was just like sticks and it's popping out and looking great. The uh, basil's growing. There's some fresh shoots coming out on that pepper. Don't look at that. That window needs to, you didn't see that. The window's fine. It's totally clean. Ficus seems happy. The alocages are happy. The orchids are still kind of throwing a fit. I did away with my orchid stand. I was like, they're getting too big for it. And then I had a friend who was starting to really get into orchids and I was like, hey, there's only a few I'm attached to. Take what you want because there's just too many. Like I love my Vandas, these guys right here need to move that gotta remember to move that but the others there were only a few that i was like really attached to and so i held on to those and got rid of the rest and i'm sure i'll get more at some point but it's like if i'm not crazy about the plant it's like all right we had a good time together now you can go you know after a while if the plant's not really doing much for you why hold on i'd rather give that to somebody who's going to learn something from the plant and enjoy it and appreciate it and maybe get into orchids or plants i think that's a great thing and then, and oh, I was getting so sick of the squirrels. I'm going to have to put my orchids inside of something like a netted cage or something next year because they just destroyed so many of them. I mean, they didn't destroy them. I keep trying to get that sherry baby in the shop back there. But they go in, they pull the mulch out. The small orchids, they just take them. <laughs> They're just like, nah, mine. Yink. They take it. And I'm not growing my orchids for the squirrels. Absolutely not. So I'm just holding on to, like, the bigger ones and... There's some sun damage on them, but lots of sheaths and spikes and, you know, it's hard to have orchids that always look perfect, especially when you're moving them in and out of your house. You need to make a little bit more room over here for some of these alocages, don't I? Fun would it be if, like, in one day everything was done, they just sit around and have nothing to do all winter. That's no fun. So I got the outline done. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel, and I thank you for it. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell that way you'll know when new videos come out. I have all my social media linked down below in the description of the video. I'm on Instagram way more than anything else. That's typically the best place to find me, usually Instagram. Pepperomia flower alert. That weird little wormy flower. It's neat. Also, this kind of makes me feel weird. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I, I totally, I forgot. How could I do that? You guys, I always hear back from everybody when you don't get to see the pets. How could I go an entire vlog without showing any of the pets? Let's just check in real quick. Um, hello? Hey, Tobes, where is everybody? Oh, there she is, a baby girl. What's wrong? What's that face for? What's that face for, pumpkin? Oh, okay. Bye-bye, pumpkin. You good girl. And hello, Zanio and Toby, right in my face, good boy. Hey, pumpkin. You roll over? Fucking roll over. No? You don't want to? Okay, bye, pumpkin. Oh, and there's Tuck. You good boy. I'll come to you, Tucker. You don't have to come down here. I'll, I'll come to you. Good boy. Oh. I know. Stairs are hard. We don't like stairs anymore, do we, Tucker? <laughs> good boy. Yeah, good boy. What a good boy, Tuck. That face. You so sweet. You so just sweet, Tuck. Yes, you are. Good boy. Oh. My shadow. Hi, bud. Hey, sweetie. You been chewing on the palm tree? You been chewing on the palm tree at all? She hasn't. The other cat, though, he sits here. You can see it from downstairs in the family room. You can just see the palm tree shaking because he's always pulling on the fronds there. It's cold up here. Why is it so cold? Why don't you come downstairs? It's nice and warm down there. Should probably move this palm tree because have to do that every time you go downstairs. Ooh, package. What is that, Toby? What's out there? Tucker, why didn't you let me know? You didn't let me know. You could have let me know, Tuck. Why didn't you tell me there was a package here? Okay. Oh, coming down? You think you're going somewhere? And just knocking things over left and right. Good boy, Tuck. Good boy, Tuck. You're not going out there. Oh, ho, ho. finally getting the dishwasher fixed. Been waiting for the parts to come in for a few weeks. Okay, Tobes. Back to the outro. You know, 
wrap this whole thing up because I can feel myself getting into vlog mode, which doesn't make sense because I'm trying to end the vlog. I'm going to start one right after this, though. Next week, going to do the Christmas stuff around the house, a few more things in the garage, and then Vlogmas, maybe? I mean, I'm going to upload more, but it's not going to be Vlogmas because then how if I vlog daily... <laughs> then how will I have the vlog at the end of the week? Because the Saturday vlogs are just a compilation of me vlogging every day. I haven't quite figured that one out yet, but there will be more videos coming up after Thanksgiving. And there's the pets. What was I saying in here? Oh yeah. Keep on growing. Bye.